This presentation will be on registers, um, which is made using flip-flops. So let's quickly look at what we're talking about. Um, you'll recall what we did in the previous lecture is what a flip-flop is. And a flip-flop is literally just one memory element. Uh, the flip-flop works in the following way. It's a, it's a, a small little component which will memorize one bit of information on a clock edge. So that there is what we call a flip-flop. This triangle means it's triggered on a rising clock edge. And all that this does, just conceptually, I've, I've shown you how to make them, I've told you what it does, but what it boils down to, what we use these th things for, is to remember a single bit. So when you put a zero there and you have a clock edge, that zero will be put onto Q and then it will remember that Q there. So this here acts as a memory element. When there's a one there and there's a clock edge, it will put one there and re then remember that one until you have another clock edge. So this is one bit's worth of memory element. If you want to remember four bits worth, you need to put down four of these. There we go. So this here will remember four bits for you. And what we typically do with systems like this, and I'll explain why in a second, is we connect them to a common clock. And this we call synchronous. Synchronous just means all of these will, at the same time, do the sampling of D and put it onto Q. So if you can imagine you have a rising edge on clock, then all of these at the same time will say, copy the value D, paste it onto Q and keep it there. In electronic speak, sample D, put it onto Q. So this here is a 4-bit, what we call, register. This will remember 4 bits worth of information. It will remember 4 bits. And at each clock edge, it will sample D, the 4 individual bits here, and put it onto Q. So this is just a normal 4-bit piece of memory. What we're looking at here is now a shift register. Shift, S-H-I-F-T. A shift register works in a bit different, works a bit different than the one I have here. This one is what we call a parallel access register. So the information goes in all the bits at once. It's parallel access. So it's put in in parallel and it's taken out in parallel. Parallel just means not one by one but all at the same time. This here is a shift register, and this shift register takes in one bit at a time and shifts it through. It shifts it through to the output. So what happens is, once again, you'll see all the clocks are connected together, which means they're synchronous. And I'm just going to draw this quickly. I'm going to pause the video while I draw it to save time. So just give me a second. Right, so this here is the serial register, and the reason I've drawn this, I, I want to explain to you what happens here. When you have an edge on clock, it means that all of these, at the same time, will go copy, paste. Right? At the same time, all four of these will go sample D, put it onto Q. And that sample onto D, onto D happens when that edge is detected and it puts it onto Q a few nanoseconds later. So all four of these points here that I'm drawing here will be sampled on the clock edge and then put onto the next Q a few nanoseconds later. So essentially what happens is, if you have or whatever value is here, will just shift up to the next Q, which is why we call this a shift register on clock. So if you can provide something here into this input, which I've named serial in here, if you can put a number here such that the number is presented when there's clock edges, so if you want to put the number 1010, you'll first put a 1 there 
on the first clock edge. On the second clock edge, you'll put a zero. Next clock edge, a one again. Next clock edge, a zero. Then after four clock cycles, here will be the number zero, one, zero, one. So first I put in the one, then the zero, then the one, then the zero. This whole thing will shift that number into this register serially in a way that we call time multiplexing. We, 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 we segmentize time and present that signal here at different times, different bits. So I have one, zero, one, zero. And at different times, I present that number at the serial input. And then they shift into this register. And if I give more clock cycles, so four clock edges will bring the whole number in. And the next clock edge will push that number out then um, from serial out, which I've called SOT, there, S out. And that's indicated in a, a bit of a, uh, I think, a clearer way here. If you consider this, this is that same re serial register. And at different times, we present a certain one or a zero, uh, some signal we present here at in. And then this table here tells you what happens with that. So first of all, let's pretend that they were all cleared. We don't really know. That should really be x, 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 x. We don't know what the value of q1, q2, q3, q4 are unless we've reset them but we had we don't even have a reset function here so when you power it up you know what you don't know what q1 q2 q3 q4 are um, and then you start with clock cycles you present first a one then a zero then a one then a one then a one then a zero 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 at each clock edge you present it so first of all we put a one there and then there's a clock cycle which takes this one to q1 and then the next clock cycle, it shifts it up to Q2, the next clock cycle to Q3, the next clock cycle to Q4, etc. And then, obviously, on the next clock cycle, it presents 0 at N. That's 0 there. I present that there. And then this whole thing is clocked through. And what you can see is, every time this whole number is shifted up by one bit, after every clock edge, because of this whole sample and present at the output effect that all happens synchronously synchronous just means at the same time they're using the same clock all right so you have this effect where this shift register is just remembering four bits of information and the way that we input data into the shift register is through a serial method and the way that we output it is also serially serially just means on the same line at different steps of time or different stages of the process. So time segmenting it at different times representing that number or different bits of that number at the input and then at that different times four clock cycles later it will appear at out. And I just want to show you on the paper real quick again. So this was parallel input, parallel output and this here is serial input, serial output they both just remember four bits of information. It's just the way we enter them is different. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at something that performs both of these functions. So it, it says, I don't know whether I'm going to enter it in parallel and read it out in parallel, or whether I'm going to enter it in serial or output it in serial. I don't know which one I'm going to use. Let's just cater for all of them. Because if you consider the circuit I have here, the serial in, serial out one, you can, I'm pretty sure you can see that after the four clock cycles, after the four clock edges, when I have this number in these registers, I can just measure there, measure there, measure there, measure there, which means I really have a parallel output already. I can use serial out or parallel out. Parallel out means I read all of them at once. I can you do whatever I want with them. Serial out means I need to read them out one by one by one um, in four clock cycles. So what this is here is it's a combination of the two. This says I have a multiplexer and this multiplexer will select do I use parallel input to read all of the four bits in at once or am I going to shift it through serially just look at the cursor quickly I hope you can see the cursor or I'm going to shift it through serially if I select the zero selection of this multiplexer it turns into a shift register. So if this, this um, S over bar L, which stands for not shift load, if that is equal to zero, I'm shifting. If it's equal to one, then the multiplex to select the one input, the, the second input there, uh, which means all of them will be, ah, oh, no, 
all of them will be loaded in in parallel so if that multiplexer select zero it forms a shift register as we've seen on the previous slide that's exactly the same if the multiplexer selects zero however if the multiplexer selects one then it turns into a parallel reading in of the data so if a multiplexer selects one every time all of these are connected right all these multiplexer selection points are connected if they're all read in at once then these four bits will just remember whatever was presented here at parallel input and then in terms of the output this thing just presents both it presents the parallel output so you can read it if you want and it also gives you the serial output right at the end here if you want to read that so you can choose between parallel and serial output and then by selecting the multiplexer selection or using the multiplexer select line you can decide whether you want serial in or parallel in either one of the two um, the reason I'm doing this by the way I've given you this is because the textbook does something strange so I'm starting with a simple one I'm just going to turn it around 90 degrees rotation exactly the same thing it's just been rotated you can see rotated by minus 90 degrees and still I have the serial in that passes through passes through passes through if the multiplexer select zero if the multiplexer select one it's parallel in, parallel in, parallel in. So parallel will read all of them into the register using one clock edge. Serial in will read them in one by one by one by one. And then after four clocks, clock edges, you'll have the number there, which you can overwrite with one clock cycle if you do parallel in. Parallel out is just at the top here and serial out. So it's exactly, exactly the same thing. Now what the textbook does. The textbook does exactly the same thing, it's just for some reason they decided not to use multiplexers, but they decided to use the AND gate implementation and an OR gate implementation of a multiplexer. So that whole thing there is just a MUX. That whole thing there is just a MUX, just a MUX, just a MUX with, you can see there, that's the select line. So whenever you see this, just remember what is actually happening is it's this. It's something that selects between... Um, parallel and serial inputs and this thing can provide parallel output and serial output at the same time the only thing that I want to add to it is where do we use these things because you will do this for your project is you typically use this for serial communication when you want to communicate between point A and point B and you don't want all the bits to be transferred at the same time to save copper we only use one line which we call our serial communication line and then when you want the data input into this what we call a UART universal asynchronous uh, receiver transmitter uh, UART you put all the bits in at once into this register and it then shifts it out one bit at a time on the other side we receive one bit at a time and we read it out in parallel when all of them have been received. So it's a way to transmit, to, to transmit information over a distance using just one line. In fact, it's two. You also need the ground line just for a reference and then the serial line here. Um, so this here is a, exactly that previous slide used parallel in and serial out. So just to be sure, it's that thing or this thing, same thing, with uh, used as parallel input and serial output. And then on the other side, when you want to decode that information, that serial stream, you use it as a serial in and parallel out. So you'll use one clock edge to read it into this register, and then four subsequent clock edges to read it out onto the serial line. Those four clock edges then you use on this side to sample it into the register here, and then one subsequent clock edge to read it out here. So it takes a number of clock edges to do it. And typically here, you have a much faster clock to allow you to what we call oversample to, um, to be sure that you get the information right on the other side. But we'll get to that. And that's more or less it for shift registers for now.